First off, I would just like to thank everyone who has subscribed to my channel. I've hit 100 subscribers, which is more than I thought that I would get when I first started because I didn't know anything about making videos or editing videos or what I was going to talk about or anything like that. So if you are one of the 100 subscribers, thank you. And if you're not one of those 100 subscribers, why don't you subscribe? For today, however, there's been some interesting things in the news that I wanted to mention. One of them, the first of them, being sad news that Farley Moat, the author of Never Cry Wolf, died this week. Never Cry Wolf is a book about his time researching wolves in northern Canada and spending time out there and really learning about what they were doing instead of what lots of people said they were doing when they wanted to hunt them, like killing caribou. But that was us, it wasn't the wolves. I've always enjoyed his storytelling and he will be greatly missed. The second piece of news is that NBC has bought the rights to cover the Olympics in the US in all platforms for, what was it, seven and a half billion dollars until 2032. So the next six Olympics, so three winter and three summer. What they have is called a monopoly, which means if you remember the previous NBC coverage of the Olympics, that this is not going to go well. Especially for those of us who are denizens of the internet and constantly have a new information updating, so most of the stuff that they're waiting to show you, you already know what happened unless you're like super diligent about, you know, banning all forms of contact with the internet. If they want to have rights to the TV and mobile and all that kind of stuff, that's fine. But if we want to be able to access it from the internet, you have to have a cable subscription or be able to log in with your cable subscription, which I didn't know what that was. Like when I wanted to watch the whitewater kayaking and canoeing, I had to wake up rather early in the morning, which I'm not against, but still like I had to go through their whole system of trying to figure out, well, just let me watch the race. I understand there's not that many people in the US that are probably up at 5.30 in the morning watching these races, but still. You'd hope that something like the Olympics is above that kind of money or corporate sponsorships because you want it to just be about the sport and human competition and cheering for your country. But when it comes down to stuff like that, it just gets so frustrating. But for those of us who are slightly tech savvy, there are ways of <laughs> watching it live and how you want to. And lastly, as some of you know, I worked as a brain researcher for about a year and a half and got published. And you can go read the paper that I published if, if you want, but you don't, you don't have to. There's no paywall. It's awesome. But the actual piece of news I wanted to talk about was that there was a paper published in Science that showed that generating new neurons in the memory part of the brain actually makes, well, mice forget things. So well, you probably heard that like you don't get any new neurons throughout your life. Uh, that's true for most animals. But in humans, there's a certain part of your hippocampus called the dentate gyrus where you actually do get some neurogenesis throughout your life, and though it decreases as you get older. The scientists found that boosting the production of neurons in this area increased their performance on certain things, but then made them forget other things. They went on to test this on some animals that don't do this neurogenesis later in life, uh, like guinea pigs, and found that when they use the same methods to increase neurogenesis, they became more forgetful as well. And interestingly enough, one of the things that they use to boost neurogenesis is Prozac. So there are some links about our brain that we're slowly learning, even though we already kind of knew how to manipulate them. Of course, there is a big difference between mice, guinea pigs, and humans as far as brain complexity goes. So there's still a lot that we don't know. Either way, it's an interesting article and I'll link to it in the description, but you can only read the abstract because it's behind a paywall. That's it for today. I have recently acquired after Effects, so I have some video ideas going forward in the future that I hope to incorporate that into, but I am still learning. So you can look out for that in the future, and I hope you're having a good day. I'll see you soon.